today's video, we survived 100 days in Minecraft, except we're in the world of the time I got reincarnated as a slime. And that's me, a lowly slime. For now, our goals for this video is to defeat the Conqueror of Flames, Shizue, to defeat Calamity Class Monsters, and lastly, to turn into a Demon Lord, which requires 10 thousand souls will we survive till the end watch to the end of the video to find out also we made it to 230,000 subscribers next up is 250,000 so if you guys can hit that subscribe button it'll mean the world to me finally hit the like button for the algorithm and let's get straight into it Day one, we started off in a beautiful forest biome. Now there's a bit of a twist to this day one. Instead of me actually surviving throughout the entire day one, I actually had to die. Yeah, that's that's not a joke because the concept of reincarnation is dying and being resurrected into a new world. So that's what me and my boy Mason did. And as you can see here, we had a couple of options that obviously your boy picked slime. I listen, okay, what else were we supposed to do? I'm trying to be like your boy Rimuru. And as you can see, we have a bit of a buff just being a slime in general. 12 HP, our attack damage is a little bit lowered, I think. I'm not even sure honestly we get some of this cool stuff called magic kill and all of these awesome abilities the sucky part about my spawn when i reincarnated was the fact that i was in the middle of an ocean so i obviously had to swim to the shore oh right i also look like a slime check it out i'm not gonna lie the eyes kind of creep me out so it's a good thing i'm playing on first person mode but at last i finally reached the land and started mining some wood also made some stone tools like you do in any other you know 100 day video and then mason started mocking the way i look as if he didn't look exactly the same as me i also noticed that i had around two 2600 magic kill and this really cool gui thing that tells me that my race is slime as if i couldn't tell the skill that i actually resurrected with was known as predator and for those that don't know what it is i can basically absorb my enemies after killing them and get whatever abilities that that creature has so sometimes it was a little buggy on this mod but i was super excited to use it i also went and did a little bit of mining i gained some cobblestone and made some cobblestone tools added to that i also got myself a torch because it was very dark in the beginning and i didn't really want to leave you guys in the dark besides that we really didn't have much luck so we decided to just leave the place but by the time we actually left it became nighttime and we were surrounded by mobs i actually wanted to test out my predator skill so i started attacking some of the mobs and it didn't work and i wasn't sure exactly why but this jump boost and fall damage nullification really did come in handy days two to five i also found some copper ore that i'm probably not even going to use at the end of the day but hey it looked cool and that's all thanks to me accidentally falling into this ravine and not knowing that i had no fall damage i mean i did this all on purpose yep i'm so so great we spent quite a bit of time actually exploring the caves and the full length of the ravine there was also a hidden ravine that was connected to this one so obviously i went to go check that out as well i found this green thing this red thing and a whole bunch of ores it was sick i wasn't exactly sure what i was looking for besides modded items because that's kind of what intrigued me at that time now one thing i didn't account for was the fact that there was stuff down here and by stuff i mean these things called spell breakers now i didn't exactly know what it was for but i instantly started attacking it and one of course it dropped this weird purple thing i just collected it and moved on with my day man what i do for some diamonds right now but it's whatever we have the rest of the series to get those i also found a lava ravine so that's pretty cool i soon also came into the realization that there weren't many of these crystal things so you know whenever i got the chance to i decided to mine them day 6 to 10 i was finally done with my mining trip and decided to head up there i was on a gigantic mountain for no reason another one of the goals that i actually wanted to achieve was becoming a demon lord now, if you guys don't know what that is it's basically a way to get a lot of power really fast but the only issue with that is i need 10,000 souls as an offering which was kind of on my mind this entire time but i thought of some interesting strategies on how i would go about that but i'll be working on that in a bit during my travels i also found this little gang of skeletons i don't know why but i just had to pick a fight with them and obviously they were defeated and that's when it hit me i realized that some of the skills that i actually had weren't even equipped so obviously your boy equipped it and it looked like this one of the first things that i decided to test my predator skill on was the creeper now the cool thing about the creeper is it actually drops this lightning ability and this would honestly carry me throughout the entire series and i obviously need to get my hands on it and there we go it is known as black lightning it's one of the extra skills that i learned and also one of my only attack skills now i'm feeling pretty powerful not only do i have black lightning i also have the skill predator i was feeling pretty goaded so i started smoke with almost every mob that i could visually see and that's what i did for a while it also got me to realize that not every mob actually drops power so in the end of the day 
I was kind of wasting a bit of time. Oh, right. I also blasted Mason with the black lightning to test it out. It apparently did three to five hearts and he used it back on me, which I wasn't really fond of. But hey, you know what? What comes around goes around, all right? Found that out the hard way. And here's a few clips of me very deliberately aiming at Mason, but claiming that I was trying to kill another mob around him. And I also found out that I can make pigs into zombified piglins. Pretty cool, right? Until Mason started smacking one. One of the things that I did want to do was make a base. That way we have a place of operations and somewhere to actually go back to and store a bunch of our loot at. In my search for the perfect place to make a base, I found myself an igloo. It didn't have much, but I did decide to take some of the stuff from it. Days 11 to 20. After leaving that area, I eventually found myself a goblin camp. Now, one thing that I definitely wanted to do was try and see if I can manage myself a goblin village. Because, you know, I'm not the most responsible slime. But listen, okay, I was definitely gonna give it a shot. It was worth a shot. Not to mention, I wanted to try naming a couple of the goblins there. Naming the goblins actually took a magic kills, and for some reason, with the version of mod that we had, every time we named one of these goblins, they'd basically go invisible. They were still there, don't get me wrong, but they, they were invisible for some reason. Worst part is, they still took the magic kills. What a scam. The place looked pretty nice. They had a couple campfires around, a couple of the igloo shelter things that they had. It was a little bit flammable looking, but hey, listen, okay? Why would anything in any of my videos burn down to a crisp, right? Right? Anyways, that's when we also decided to finally start working on a bit of a base. So I carved out into the side of a mountain and I just kind of made it into like a little bit of a cube shape. Don't ask me why. I'm not the best builder. All right. I'm not some building guru on Minecraft. But at the end of the day, this was what the base looked like. Not too shabby if I do say so myself. I also started smelting some of the stuff that I had and went out to actually kill some of the mobs that were, you know, damaging the goblins like a good Samaritan should be doing. Shortly afterwards, there was also a blizzard that was going on. Now, I don't think this was really related to anything, but it looked really cool. So I decided to add it on and look at this goblin, you know, I'm just minding their own business. Just happy that it could live peacefully ever after. Then in a close distance, I noticed that Mason was being attacked by this gigantic centipede. So I swooped in and got the last hit on it. I was more of a moral support in that situation. But you know what? The effort is what counts. But it definitely wasn't what he took into consideration. Every time Mason would go into a fight, he was also blinded. After looking further into why these types of symptoms were even coming up in the first place, it's because his magicule levels were low. Every time we used one of our abilities, it would basically take up magicules. And we didn't have infinite amounts of those, so I had to be careful on what I used it on. I was definitely stacking up and storing up for bosses, unlike Mason here. I also went on ahead and went back into the mines because I needed some iron. Just a little bit, not too much. I just wanted to get stacked up a little bit, just in case I get attacked by a centipede. After getting those resources, I then went back up and started smelting it with the lovely coal that I also collected from that trip. After getting half a set of iron armor, I then go into the forest to find myself a spider. Now this thing looked a little weird. I didn't know if it was a bee, a spider, a bee spider, a spider bee, I don't know. I also got some long distance hits on it with my lightning skill. The lightning skill was really powerful. But then it started getting closer and it actually started hitting me. Not to mention it poisoned me and it gave me one other effect that I don't even want to look at. I don't even know what that thing was. But I soon also found out that it wasn't the only one in the forest. There was another one and this one was a little bit more difficult because I wanted to see if I could take it head on with just an axe alone and my shield of course. But no, this thing was actually really deadly. And if I didn't take those long shots in the beginning with the last one, I probably wouldn't have been able to kill it. The creatures that this mod adds are no joke. I gotta be careful. After that, I wanted some more coal just in case I ran out of torches because you know, with shaders and stuff, things get a little dark sometimes. So I went up into the mountains and searched for some coal that was open and I didn't really wanna go back into the caves again. The downside to it all was the fact that I got attacked by this dire wolf. Now I know in the anime, you're actually able to tame this guy. I just don't know how to do it here. And I also didn't want to name it because it might disappear. But at the end of the day, it disappeared anyway after stealing my axe. Like, what the heck is a dire wolf going to do with my iron axe? I don't know. It's probably just bringing home food for his friends and family. Mmm, I love me a good iron axe. No, but it did suck. But I also noticed that I somehow picked up a bow. I think it's probably from one of the skeletons that I was fighting. I had four arrows, so, you know, I wasn't a little bit reckless with it. Not at all. I went back home and used some of the remaining iron that I had to actually make myself an axe. Why wouldn't I make myself an axe? That's literally what I lost because of a freaking dire wolf. No hate, just facts. Days 21 to 30. Now, the one thing I wasn't really expecting to see was Shizue. Now, for those that don't know anything about the anime, this person is 
basically a very powerful individual. And it's also one of the bosses in the game. And one of the goals. But honestly, me and Mason, we thought we were ready for this, okay? We thought we were prepared for this fight. Not as much as we thought we were. Because right when we were getting some really good hits on it, it decided to basically implode into this fire demon. And the fire demon was known as Ifrit. Just look at it. My health was just basically annihilated from even looking at it. I started shooting a bunch of my shots at it, but then I soon realized that I, you know, ran out of arrows because I didn't have any to begin with. He also started flying in the air. I was actually really confused. I didn't know it could fly. Hey, don't blame me. I didn't watch the anime in a hot minute. Luckily for us, it actually got stuck in a corner and we started using our black lightning against it. But then I soon also started reaping the, I was going to say benefits, but the negative of using magic kills and using the ability black lightning. So we had to store our magic kills once again. We literally get them back over time. So we decided to take a bit of a break in the house while the thing was outside just wreaking havoc. That's honestly a dub by my books. Me and Mason was honestly strategizing on the best way to actually take them down, but we honestly got nothing. Our main strat for this whole situation was run and gun with the black lightning. And this is how that went. To be honest, it did go pretty well for quite some bit. It also started making clones of itself, which was kind of annoying because we didn't know which one was the real one. But luckily, they're like shadow clones, right? You hit them once and they go poop. So the real one wasn't too difficult to actually spot. But the only issue we had with the whole situation was right when we got it low, it started flying up into the air. So your boy started playing some bed wars. I also started bridging towards him just so I could get those extra hits in with the black lightning. And there it was, the final hit on Ifrit. Luckily, the clones didn't actually do much harm to me, which is kind of why this was so easy. I also got myself this skill called Combustion and the skill called Rage Barrier. I didn't have too much use for these two skills, honestly, throughout the whole thing. But hey, it was nice having. And your boy finished one of the goals. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, the interesting thing is the fact that the human body of Shizue is actually just the host. So the demon was kind of controlling her. So she just completely flopped onto the ground. Luckily, I was a slime, so fall damage didn't really matter. And I just took a leap of faith all the way down to the bottom. I also got to witness that Shizue was in fact dying. But instead, at the very last second, I decided to use my predator skill and got myself my human form. I also got this really cool mask. Now check it out. Both me and Mason managed to get our human forms. This is looking sick. Oh yeah, and heads up. I got myself a new skin. How you guys liking the new skin? Mm -hmm. Let me know in the comments. Oh, and also, this is what the barrier looks like. See, I personally didn't want to use it, but Mason started using it because he wanted to test it out, I guess. It looked kind of cool. It was all right. I still prefer the skill Black Lightning, so I'm probably going to stick to that. Right when it hit day, we also decided to go ahead and visit the campsite. You know, the one with the goblins around. But we couldn't actually see any. We were actually curious as to where it all went. There was a lot of food in here, though. See, so this is where things got a little bit difficult because of the fact that they turned invisible every time we named one of these guys. So it wasn't really much help to us, especially if we can't see where our allies even are. So it was a little bit weird. Honestly, we tried our best, all right? We tried our very best. Stays 31 to 45. Now, this is where things got a little bit interesting because we were then moving towards our second goal, in which our second goal was simply to beat the collector. Calamity monsters. Now, if you guys don't know what calamity level monsters are, it's basically the stuff you saw in the intro. Very dangerous monsters that are very difficult to defeat, and we need to be very strategic about this. You don't want to mess with these guys, but listen, okay, we're no chickens. We're taking these guys on head first, okay? You hear me? I hope so, because if you can't, then this microphone's busted. Oh, and I also found this waystone. I never used this throughout the entire thing but it was really cool now during my exploration of the village itself i found this really cool thing called the spellmonger now this guy sold me a codex arcana do i know what it is no am i gonna explain what it is no how would i if i don't know what it is all i know it's two things that i don't know how to get so i was just gonna let it be and this is when my building side actually came in to shine so what your boy was gonna do all right hear me out it might sound a little bit evil but it was all for a good cause me so basically the concept is very very simple we're gonna get two villagers on top of these cobblestone things that i'm building right here and make ourselves a villager farm there'd also be a very long bridge that would basically take them to a whole different area and a whole different chunk that way the villagers can just keep breeding and putting more villager entities in that chunk it was a very simple system and by the time we were done with it this is what it looked like now look i know it's not visually pleasing it's also made out of a bunch of cobblestone but you know what it works all right that's what matters now you might be wondering oh adrian why did you even build this thing why do you need so many villagers for because as i've already mentioned once before i need ten thousand souls to become a demon lord and nothing and i mean nothing was gonna get in my way while i was also showing the results to mason we found this weird shark looking thing now i didn't really know what it was 
But we decided to strike it with some black lightning and basically ended its life. This thing is way too overpowered. Days 46 to 60. And that's when a very interesting thing actually hit us. So Mason mentioned that if you kill a dolphin, you actually get a pretty interesting skill. So I went and searched for a dolphin and eventually found myself one. After killing about two dolphins, I finally got the skill. And it's known as hydraulic propulsion. Now, it's just a fancy word for basically saying you can move fast in the water. And look at this thing, I felt like a Pokemon. I was honestly living the best life, but honestly, this was kind of like the little scene that you get in the beginning where it's just like, oh, it's all good and dandy until the boss basically comes along and ruins our day. But before any of that, I actually went out and found a couple of villages and took the lives of some of these villagers. Why? No, I already told you guys. Come on now. I'm trying to be a demon lord. I need these souls, okay? Let me be. In the search of another village, before we summon some sort of monstrosity onto the world, there's this thing that I found. It's red, it looked weird, and I wanted to go into it. But Mason was the first person to go into it, and he soon found out that it actually sucked. Now, it's supposed to be the replacement for the nether portal, Except for the fact that it just brings you into like the top of the nether, which is like a really weird place to be in in the first place. So I wasn't even going to bother with that. He could honestly knock himself out in there. This is also the time that we also stumbled upon another goblin village. Now we tried doing the same thing with the whole naming system with this village. It did take up quite a few magic cues. We tried it, it still glitched out and they were invisible, which really did suck. You guys want to see what happened to the ice village? Yeah, yeah, that happened. Before I knew it, Mason actually stumbled himself on something that we probably shouldn't have touched with anyways. But hey, listen, we meddled with it anyways, alright? There was this really dark cave, and we just kept going down it. And at the very end of it, we actually found ourselves this thing that looked kind of like a human heart. Okay, never mind. It did not look human at all. But it was something, right? But basically, what you do with this thing is if you put it next to a sacrifice... It then turns into this legendary being known as Charyptus, which is also said to be on par with the Demon Lord's power, which basically meant this thing was hella strong, and it's also close to the power that I want to get. So we gave it a test. We went to the nearby village and basically put it right next to a villager, and that became the host. It actually went inside of a house, and then this happened. I don't even know how I survived that. It was insane. I also decided to take my slime form again because it actually had more hearts and we basically just started blasting it with the black lightning that we had. That was honestly the best strategy we had because if we got too close, it's shark minions would start coming after us and once they grab you, you're in the air. Now, I don't even know how to explain this thing. This thing was a flying freaking shark. This thing was gigantic. I don't even know how it was floating. It doesn't have wings, no nothing. Honestly, it was probably just magic. Fortunately for us, for some reason, even though it's like some sort of shark creature, it doesn't know how to swim and it got stuck in the water as you can see right here. I started getting some hits in, but as you can see, it actually took a huge toll out on my axe's durability, which kind of sucked. As you can see, Mason actually got quite a bit of a hit on Charyptus and it was getting really, really low, but the sharks were super annoying. But eventually, we finally got the last hit on Charyptus. And down went the flying demon shark. That's what I'm talking about. Sadly, it actually didn't drop any abilities. I was really hoping that I might get, you know, one of his abilities, or if he even had any. I'm not too sure, because I didn't do much research on these bosses. I wanted to see them firsthand what they were actually like. Now, this one was actually really difficult. And in all honesty, in comparison, I think the sharks were the most annoying part of this entire fight. And also one of the most dangerous things, because they literally grab you, take you into the air, and you just slowly lose health. Alright, the only thing that kept me alive from these sharks was the black lightning. Would I do this fight again? No. No, I would not. I also got this thing called raw megalodon meat. That's something, right? Also, a lot of the sharks that were left over didn't really despawn with the boss. They were just kind of around, and I didn't really want to engage them too much. So I just went on with my day. Day 61 to 75. After we split up, we were basically searching for this one structure that would take us to this very interesting place. Now, what this place exactly was, was also another one of the challenges. The boss is known as Colossus, and it looks like this guy. Kinda looks like a Transformer, I'm not even gonna lie to you. But I was actually super hyped for this fight, because it's one of the more difficult ones because of the simple fact that we're in such an enclosed space. But this is actually how we go into its domain. This portal was literally the way you go in, and there's this huge corridor that we just have to walk into now you might see the boss bar at the top of it dying but it actually didn't die i don't actually know what's going on there i think it's just a visual glitch because look at the end of the day it's still at the very end as with any of the other bosses we took cover and hit it with lightning and basically rinse and repeat that it was a strategy and when one player was basically distracting one of the bosses the other one would go all out 
and then we basically just flipped the rolls that's how it would go now i'm not gonna lie to you this guy was really tough and honestly i tried my very best keeping my distance from him but at last right when it was next to one of the covers that we were actually using primarily we took the last hit on it and it was defeated boom another one of the bosses defeated by the hands of a slime let's go after this guy dies it then spawns in a portal the portal actually leads us into this very interesting room now what the room was for i kind of had a hunch about it because i read it on the wiki but we were going to test it out for our very selves but one thing that i didn't take into consideration was the fact that i was frozen in freaking time like i was look at me look at me i look like i'm hacking i asked mason for some assistance but he just kept going up for some reason then after he realized he doesn't know what he's doing he came back down and basically freed me from you know uh cryostasis so it basically leads us on this long spiral road up to the very tippy top now apparently if you just look into the sky for around 15 to 20 seconds while holding the shift button it's supposed to do something some sort of fairy ritual type thing nothing happened i waited there for actually like an hour if you're wondering how i waited an hour that's because i went out to get some mcdonald's and remember this guy now i know it's not the same person but basically the roles are exactly the same we found him in the cave during the first like 30 days ish i left him no remorse okay i was a little bit stronger than i was back then and i just black lightning the heck out of his face it definitely wasn't gonna be able to trample me day 76 to 85 but that's exactly when we found some orcs now these orcs were looking really weird right so we basically started attacking it because i was wondering what type of ability would i get from killing an orc in the first place do they even have powers they're kind of just like some sort of demi-human creature thing and this thing definitely had a lot more health than a normal human being that's for sure it even had more health than a slime they weren't very difficult to kill and there were just a couple of them so honestly it wasn't too bad of a situation and we honestly just black lightning the heck out of it. I actually traveled quite a bit until I finally just realized, hey, maybe I should just sit down and make a base here. And listen, all right, I'm no architect. I'm no construction manager. All right, this thing has cobblestone, diorite, and wood. I it's the worst combination. Well, at least the way I placed it all. And I don't think Mason was too fond of the house either. But listen, okay, as long as it has practical use, it's okay by my standards. And I also didn't want another house burning down like when I was fighting Ifrit. I also needed some more resources, so I started mining some wood just so I'd have enough resources for the house in general. And this is what the roof looked like, and this is what the whole house looked like in general. I know, again, it's not the best. Listen, all right, if my videos were about my buildings, then I would suck. At this time, I also decided to journey into the desert because I was in search of an orc lord. But instead, what I ended up finding was maybe a little bit better? I guess so. I mean, I found myself a desert temple. I went to the very bottom, got some of the TNT from it. I got two enchantment books that weren't normal enchantment books. These were like some custom enchants from the mod itself. And I got myself some golden apples, so that's a bit of a W. Made some pretty cool food with some of the shark stuff that we got. And Mason encountered the Orc Lord. At least that's what I think they're called. Now this right here isn't actually the boss. This guy's pretty easy to defeat. The thing that we're actually fearing is known as the Orc Disaster. Now that thing is devastating, okay? That thing is basically known for even cannibalizing its own race. Not only that, but also other races as long as they have flesh. Which basically means it has crazy forms of regeneration. And with everything it eats, it also adapts its abilities. It's no laughing matter. Now you might also be asking, how do we exactly get ourselves the Orc Disaster? Because what we have right now is, you know, known as the Orc Lord. That's so I think it's called. Basically, we have to get it to fight another mob. You know, when it basically kills another mob and ends up eating its flesh, that's when it turns into the Orc Disaster. So we were thinking, right, what's the most easiest mob that we can get it to fight? At first, I was thinking along the lines of a creeper, but at the end of the day, you can't really eat a creeper because it'll probably blow up before it can do anything else. So what better way to do it than with a skeleton? You know, the, the, the mob that actually fights with its own kind sometimes. And as slimes, this thing got 10 times easier because of the simple fact that we had jump boost. So when it shot, weave. The homie skeleton basically shot the orc lord, basically transforming it into the orc disaster, which is exactly what we need to kill. Boom! Big brain. This thing was no laughing matter because of the fact that it regenerated health so freaking quickly. Even without the fact that it had mobs nearby, it still regenerated like one or two of these bars every like, I don't even know what interval it was, every 30 seconds? It was ridiculous. What made it even worse is the fact that it had so much health in the beginning anyways. Like look at how many times 
we have to shoot this guy with black lightning just to even make a sliver into his health so you know damn well just to get this guy to whatever point this thing was gonna take us a while we got it down a whole bar now we just kept going and going and going taking turns regenerating that's basically what we did on loop it worked with every other boss up until now so we were kind of confident that it would work on this one but we were really iffy because of the fact of its regeneration speed eventually it did in fact pull through and we got some of the last hits on the orc disaster and it was down another one of the cool things that it actually gave us was this thing called the demon lord seed which is actually one of the things i didn't mention in the intro not only do i need ten thousand kills I also need a demon lord seed and now we got ourselves one to work with this meant we were one step closer to actually completing the third final goal which was to become a demon lord because that is basically the peak of all powers days 86 to 95 and so the hunt began i then started heading over to the village that it all began at basically where the villager breeder was and where all of my villagers were being stored but in the meantime on our way there, there was also a couple of villages that I passed by and I just couldn't help myself, alright? There were some fresh souls there. This is actually where things got a little bit morbid because, I mean, I would explain it to you guys, but it would be much simpler to basically show you. As you can see, this is the pile of villagers that we have collected and this is what we did to it. Yeah, we showed no mercy to them. It was just death after death after death. And we just waited there as more and more villagers would just come in from the main area and get transported over to this one. I just kept going back and forth. I kept going to the village to get more villagers, basically, to attack and kill from the, you know, get-go. But I also always came back over here because eventually, eventually, as long as one person was in the area, they would keep spawning. And that's exactly what we did. This made it so, so much easier to get all of the kills that we needed to actually become a demon lord. Was it ethical? Probably not, but would I do it again? Maybe. It depends on what, you know, a demon lord actually offers in terms of becoming one. Because I still to this day don't exactly know. As you can see here, this was actually right after I then hit the 10,000 threshold. And this is what my screen looked like. It looked like my veins were kind of just covering my eyes. It did not look healthy whatsoever. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I had no freaking idea what I was doing at this moment. I was just looking around like a goofball. I didn't know that we actually had to use some sort of a command. I just kept killing more and more of these villagers. These poor villagers. I even went to 10,023 kills. I'm a bit of a psychopath, aren't I? I was honestly not sure what was wrong, so then I decided to go into my human form thinking that it would change anything, but it really didn't. And then I started looking on the wiki and found the command. So I basically just put in the command and things started happening. Now I apologize for this because the footage for this probably looks really really weird and very sporadic. But basically this is what happened. It was just a bunch of explosions with no sound and I don't know what was going on with my head. And there we have it. I have finally reached the Demon Lord status. With it also got an upgrade for my Black Thunder, so that was really cool. Not to mention, I got myself some Endless Regeneration, Ultra Speed Regeneration, and... Sorry about that. And this thing called Magic Sense. I'm pretty sure I already had that before, but this one's probably like an advanced version of it, so yeah. Days 96 to 100. So what I actually decided to do was jump down from the platform because obviously, like, even though I'm in my human form, I still don't take fall damage because the slime abilities are something I have permanently. So that's kind of a dub. But at the end of the day, it was water underneath, and I started blasting some of the survivors. Why did I do this? Uh, what? The villagers never did anything to me. I honestly just started reproducing them just so I can get all the- Okay, you know what? We don't need to talk about the situation. Oh no, I think everything was a success. We definitely managed to kill Shizui and, you know, the powerful demon lord Aphrit. Not to mention, we got Eryptus, the ruler of the sky, the orc disaster, and the colossus. All calamity level things gone out of the way right not to mention we're a demon lord now so i mean what else could i ask for 